Sometimes I, I can get why people won't step foot in the door of a church when, when they're looked at and they're treated that way and spoken to that way. Because of discouragement, they're like, you know what? Why would I even want that? Because you have to trust, you have to have faith, and that stretches you. Now, if you think somebody's coming in to be encouraged or uplifted, you would think that you would find some encouragement and uplifting in your life, especially when you go to certain people that you trust to do that. I'm going to share a story with you in the Bible today. And when I've, I've read this story, I don't know how many times, and especially over the past uh, couple weeks, and, 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 and looking at this, the more I read it, the more it somewhat astounds me as I read through some of the responses that Jesus gives to a lady. They're very bold. In some ways, you could look and think they were even borderline rude and mean. But they did have a purpose. I'll show you that purpose. So let's jump in and look. It's in Matthew chapter 15. And I'm going to read verse 21 through 26 right now. We'll pick up some more here in just a little while. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him. Now, let me just explain really quickly. Stop right here. Okay? At this point, there had really been no extension past the message to the Jews, to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were considered outsiders. Okay? They were considered this this different group of people. And so this Gentile woman was coming to the Messiah of the Jews at that time, the King of the Jews, Jesus Christ. Okay, so here's this outside lady, and she come, outside lady comes to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Verse 23, but Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all of her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. Verse 25, but she came and she worshiped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. And then in verse 26, Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now, if we stop right there in the story and you read that, you're thinking, Jesus just say that? That's because that's not really the Jesus that I've read about and this loving and the merciful and he just said all that? That's kind of the way I've read that now many, many times. Because more often than not, when a person is hurting, we seek to bring them comfort, right? And especially when you read something about Jesus, you would think, okay, Jesus is going to step in, man. He's going to lift this lady up. You know, he's going to, I mean, make her feel good, you know. But, 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 but we remind them in our situations of Jesus' love. We say things like, Jesus, Jesus, he promised to never leave you. He promised to, to never forsake you. He's always going to be there. He will carry you when you need carrying. What we don't usually say to people who are hurting is that Jesus might not want to answer you right now. In fact, I can, I I remember, you know, I've I've talked with a lot of people, you know, in in my life and ministry and they've sat across from me and, you know, there's a lot of times and situations where people have been struggling and seeking God and there's been no answers and I've sat down and tried to encourage, you know what, just be patient, just wait. But I don't think I've ever looked at somebody that's come in with a problem and said, Jesus don't want to talk to you right now. I mean, really? Kind of bold. Have you ever been in that place? Have you ever been in that place where you have prayed and you have prayed and maybe even begged Jesus? No answer. I'm talking cricket, crickets chirping, silent. Man, can I see so many heads nodding, and you know that feeling. It's a tough place. Silence is a tough place when you're expecting to hear from God. And this God that everyone tells you to have faith in isn't answering, isn't showing up. 
Nothing. Can you imagine how healthy a ministry would be? I'll just put myself in these shoes. Can you imagine you walking into my office, sitting down in one of our nice little comfortable gray chairs, pouring out your heart in this struggle, expecting some encouragement and some uplifting words and some scripture, whatever, and all you hear is... silence I have to believe that I probably wouldn't be here very long silence you have these huge issues and you get this frustration from silence and frustration leads to discouragement and then discouragement leads to walking away Just saying, you know what, I, I, I quit. And honestly, this is what the world would have expected this Canaanite woman to do. Just walk away. If you remember, she came to him with a request, and, and it was a very needy one and very unselfish one at that. It wasn't even for her. She wasn't asking for something frivolous. She wasn't asking for something, you know, that was just awful. She was asking Jesus to step in and, 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 and heal her, her daughter from this demon. I mean, that is a legit request. And, and even as you read this, if you, if you just try to paint some pictures and hear a voice of this mother that, that, that is struggling and that is in pain and that is worried and has this hope for their daughter and, 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 and nothing. Silence. And then was met with discouragement. Maybe enough discouragement for most people to give up. Maybe today that's you. Maybe today you're sitting in this building today, just maybe, and you are to that place. I mean, you are right on the edge. You are just right here, and you're like, God, man, I have tried, and I have tried, and I have prayed, and I have prayed, but it ain't happening. They said you would be here, but I don't hear you. I don't see you. I can't handle this no more. I'm done. Maybe some of you have been to that place. Maybe some of you are at that place right now. And it was just everything that you could do to get yourself here today. Life's been tough. You keep praying, but in all honesty, there's been no answers. You, maybe you prayed for a job. Maybe it's a job. Maybe right now you have no job and you're just struggling financially, but you're praying for your finances at the same time, and it just seems like, Lord, where are you at? Because you're trying. You're doing everything that you know how to do. I mean, you're really trying, and it's just not happening, and you prayed, and you prayed, and, and, and no answers. Maybe for relief from certain things. Maybe you prayed for your marriage. Man, and it's just like, it just seems like those prayers are just going maybe you're praying for your spouse maybe you're praying for a child or a family member that's just going through something continues to go through something and it's just one struggle after another and, and, and nothing maybe you've prayed for healing maybe for yourself maybe for someone else and maybe you get to that place where I, I want to have faith, but what is faith getting me anyways? And that leads to discouragement, and discouragement leads to quitting. I want to show you something in this story, this very bold story. Jesus allowed this Canaanite woman to experience the things that she experienced, to experience these potentially disturbing and, and discouraging moments, okay? These attacks, we'll call them. Four times in, this, four times in just these few verses. We'll look at all four of them. Number one, Jesus was silent, the first attack. He was silent upon hearing her request. Remember the scripture says, he, Jesus, gave her no reply, not a word at all. In essence, he ignored her. I mean, you could look at it that way. Didn't respond. Legit request. Silence. Silence. What do you suppose could have been running through this mother's thoughts? I mean, think about it. 
She's coming on behalf of her daughter. Her daughter's struggling. Her daughter needs help. She goes to Jesus, the Son of God. Silence. You think maybe she could have been entertaining the possibility that Jesus didn't want to help her? I mean, I would think that would be a, a natural human response. Like, really? Seriously? Maybe he don't want to help me. That's possible. When answers don't come when we expect them, it's easy enough just to lose hope and give up. Yet she didn't. You can tell by the story and the persistence that she doesn't give up, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, why? You know, was it because she was some just strong-willed woman and she wouldn't take no for an answer? Or maybe it was faith. Maybe her faith was so strong that it kept her there. The second discouragement didn't come from Jesus. It came from the disciples, actually. Because she had come, this outside woman had come with this request. And the disciples go to Jesus and say, man, get her out of here. Her begging is driving us crazy. Just get her out of here. Make her leave. Get, Get her out of here. In modern words, maybe we would say she's a pain, she's annoying, just get rid of her. And you know to make matters worse as you read in the scripture, Jesus doesn't stop the disciples from saying it. He doesn't rebuke them, he doesn't get on them or anything of the sort. There's nothing. At that point, still more silence. Listen, I can't tell you how many times Satan will try to make you feel as if you have been bothering Jesus, now think about it. That little voice, when you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed and nothing happens and you hear silence, and that little voice that just kind of in your ear that says, man, just stop bugging him. You're not worth it anyways. Man, after all the things that you've done, you just need to be quiet because he's not going to listen. And even if he does hear you, he's not going to answer. Some of you have heard that. I've heard that voice. And he's done that to me and and tried to discourage me and get me to that place to where, you know what, I've had enough. He's not listening. He doesn't want, I'm not worth it. And I'm I'm done. I'm just going to walk away. And he does that to us. Because Satan knows if he can discourage you, he knows your faith will be shaken. If he can discourage you, He knows that your faith potentially could be shaken, which ultimately would lead to walking away. The third discouragement came when Jesus said, I was only sent to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. In other words, he said, you're not it. You're my focus. In today's time, it would be like the church looking at somebody and saying, you're not good enough to be here. You're not dressed good enough to be here. You're not living a good enough life to be here. I mean, think about that. That happens today. Sometimes Christians, we put ourselves up here and we think we're so much better. And Maybe it's not by words. Maybe it's by looks. Maybe it's by actions. But that, that's the message that's portrayed. God, forgive us. But then sometimes we wonder, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything about our church. I think we love people well, but this is just an encouragement to get us to think. But sometimes I, I can get why people won't step foot in the door of a church when, when they're looked at and they're treated that way and spoken to that way because of discouragement. They're like, you know what? Why would I even want that? Why would I want to be around that? I don't want to be treated that way. But yet this woman's still here. And then the fourth discouragement, this is the one that really jumps out at me. This is the one that kind of makes me step back and go, what? Because basically, basically, Jesus called this woman a dog. He referenced that. He said, it isn't right to take food from the children. It's not right for me to take what I was sent to give to my people and give to an outsider. That's a tough statement. It kind of 
kind of makes me step back and go, really? Now remember, she was an outsider, and to this point, we really haven't seen that outgoing from, from, from the Jewish people into the Gentiles at this point. I believe this was a critical point. I think this was a, a, a monumental point in this message. Because this woman stayed. How many of you ladies would stay? I don't care if it was a boss, I don't, and, and your request, it is valid, and you're standing there, and in the last breath, they look at you and say, you don't deserve it, you're a dog. You would do one of two things, you would turn and leave, or you would slap them right across the face, then leave. But this lady, she still stood there. Now, this text sounds brutal. Maybe even, why is this even in the Bible? I just want to say this. and Stay with me for just a little bit. It's often difficult for us to recognize that discouragement can actually be a way for Jesus to strengthen our faith and bless us. To give us an opportunity to grow. To give us an opportunity, even in that stretching, to become more of the masterpiece that, that he has created us to be. In fact, when God allows discouragement to come our way, by the way, this was allowed. Jesus, could, he didn't have to do this. This was an allowed thing, okay? But when, when God allows that to come our way, although Satan may try to suggest to you that you and God are on the outs and that's why you've been having so many problems, Jesus will come in and he will tell you the absolute opposite. Satan wants to discourage you. He just wants you to discourage you. He wants to weaken your faith so you quit. But you know, sometimes we have to recognize that these tough things that we go through actually to make us stronger. It's actually to, to help us grow, to, for, for our faith not to be weakened, but to be strengthened. We hope you are enjoying this week's message. CPC is a viewer-supported ministry. Online, we can be found at cpcava.org. There we have multiple resources to connect you with our church, as well as a safe and secure way to support this program. Thank you for your contribution. Strengthen. Look again, real quick. And how the Canaanite woman reacted to all of these discouraging words. When Jesus ignored her, when the disciples wanted her gone, when Jesus basically said he couldn't help her and then called her a dog or referenced her to that group, she could have said something like, oh, wait a minute, isn't Jesus the Jesus of love and mercy and grace? That's the Jesus that I thought I was coming to, but that's not exactly the response that I received. I have a genuine need, and I was met with this kind of disrespect. She could have said, I quit, and walked away. But that was not her response. In verse 27... Her response and her persistence in her faith was this. Remember, this was after Jesus. He simply said, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. And she said, that's true, Lord. You're exactly right. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Ooh, what a comeback. What a comeback. Now, that says scraps in that translation. One translation says crumbs. Crumbs. You know what this lady had? This lady had so much faith and so much persistence and action in her faith that she knew even the smallest crumbs that Jesus had to offer was big enough for the problem that she was in. That's pretty big to me. Man, that speaks loud to me. This was an opportunity. I believe it with everything inside of me. An opportunity for her to show her faith and ultimately changed the world. And you know what? She passed. She said, even the littlest bit that you have to give me, it's worth something to me. It's worth me standing here and listening to this. It's worth me taking this. It's worth the discouragement and the attacks. She was able to break through the discouraging words because of her faith. She, she trusted in all things about Jesus. She knew him to be the Messiah because when she first addressed him, she addressed him as the son of David. So she knew who he was. She had faith in who he was. That's what she called him, son of David. So she knew in her heart 
She had faith and believed that he could heal her daughter because of the things that she had heard and the things that she had seen. That was faith that she had. And she continued to put that faith into action. She, she rested her faith on all that she had heard about Jesus. That's great PR. And this is that point where I'll challenge you in this teaching. Because maybe, maybe you're here to say, but my faith. And it's easy to hear stories of everyone else's faith, isn't it? Man, those, I said last week, those make us feel strong. Those uplift us. But when it's our situation and our struggle, it's a totally different thing. Because, Pastor Ron, I have prayed for that job for months, and it's not came. I have been in a financial struggle for months, and I've been faithful in my giving, and I've been faithful following God, but it's not changing. That's my faith. I've been faithful in what I'm supposed to do with God, but my marriage continues to struggle, or my spouse continues to struggle, or my child, or my grandchild, or my friend, they continue to struggle. I have this addiction, and I'm trying to battle it, and I'm trying to fight it, and I've fallen, and I've messed up, and it just seems like I can't get ahead, and I can't get past it. That's my faith, Pastor Ron. Pastor Ron, I prayed for healing. I believe God can do it. But it's not happening. And I don't understand. That's my faith, Pastor Ron. And you know what? That's just being real. I just, I get it. I get it. I get it. Maybe some of you would even say, what faith? I don't even know that I have faith. Let me tell you something really quickly you do have. The Bible says in the book of Romans that every man is given a measure of faith. Every single one of you has at least the amount of a mustard seed sitting in this. And if you were here last week, if you were here last week, you know that that mustard seed can move a mountain. You've been given that measure. It's enough for you. But it's one thing to say you have faith. It's another thing to put that faith into action. It's one thing to say you have it. But it's something totally different use it let me show you in the book of James chapter 2 in verse 14 it says what good is it dear brothers and sisters if you say you have faith but you don't show it by your actions can that kind of faith save anyone and basically he's saying (laughs) it's one thing to say it but if you ain't using it what good is it in verse 17 so you see faith by itself it's not enough Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Get the point? If we don't use it, it's not worth what it was meant to be worth. Let's skip to verse 19. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe that there's a God. I mean, seriously. They know it. They recognize it. They know that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. Satan knows that. He knows that. The writer goes on to say, how foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds or faith without works is useless? Verse 21. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? See, it wasn't the fact that Abraham said, you know, when God looked down at Abraham and said, I need you to sacrifice your son, it wasn't the fact that he said, okay. It was the fact that he went and gathered wood, got his boy, headed up the mountain, built the altar, put his boy on the altar, and ultimately stood right here, ready to rock and roll. That's what showed his faith. And of course, God showed up and provided the sacrifice. It was the action that proved his faith. He goes, you see his faith and his actions together. His actions, they made his faith complete. Verse 23, and so it happened just as the scriptures say. Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see in verse 24, We are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Just as the body is dead without breath, so faith is dead without good works. Faith is not something that we just have. It's something that we use. 
And that woman, that Canaanite woman that came to Jesus that day, there was no doubt that her faith could have been rocked. The discouragement that she must have felt from, from the responses and the actions of other people. But faith was not just something she felt. She put it to use. She didn't quit. She kept coming back to Jesus. She kept with her response and her prayers and her requests of Jesus. She believed in Jesus, even when he didn't answer. She believed in Jesus. She fought for his presence, even in, in the face of discouragement. And Jesus responded. And in verse 28 of Matthew 15, he said, Dear woman, your faith is great. Your request, it's granted. And he healed her child. Now, what if she would have quit and walked away? What if she would have just said, that, that's enough? What if she just said that? Faith is not just something hoped for. It's something that you already have, but it's up to you to use it. And to use it when God doesn't answer the right way. Or it's up to you to use it when things aren't turning out the way you want. It's up to you to use it when you're so discouraged that you could quit. It's up to you to put that faith into action even when you don't feel like it. The only way your faith dies is when you don't use it. Let me give you four things really quick. Four things as we close this out really quick to encourage you in this process. Number one, remember that your character should always be stronger than your circumstances. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. Sometimes you just have to be the bigger person. Sometimes you just have to be bigger than the circumstance. And you've got to realize that, you know what, that just rocked my world. Satan just gave me a right hook. But you know what, here I am. And I'm still standing. I'm still strong. I'm still here. Got to be, you, you, you got to realize that, that your character is stronger than your circumstances. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, rejoice always. Everyone say always. always. It doesn't say rejoice when life's good, just when life's good or just when things are going, but you rejoice always and you pray continually, which is basically what? Always, not when life is perfect, not when God is answering, but always, even in the silence, even when the crickets are chirping, even in the valleys, it's all the time. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Number two, remember that your struggles always lead to strength. Your struggles will always lead to strength through Christ. It always will. You say, well, man, I don't know about that, Pastor Ron. I feel pretty whipped right now, and I feel pretty weak. I'm telling you, there will be a point, and there will be a day when you get through it, and you look back, and you go, wow. And what you just went through may be preparing you for something down the road that you will be able to face and conquer, that you will have the strength for. Why? Because you, you, you've continued to stay. You've continued to put action to your faith. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things... In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things. Number three, remember that God's timing is always perfect. God's plans are almost always different from our plans. Not always. Sometimes we mesh up and get it right, right? But a lot of the times, you know, now we may get part of it right or this little part of it right. But the whole thing, you know, a lot of times that just don't match up. And, but God knows. His plans are perfect. Sometimes we just have to wait for that timing. In Jeremiah, one of the life verses that should be a part of who you are. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. He gets it. He knows it. Now, I fully understand this is one of these verses that's easy to read and sometimes hard to apply. Because when things are going good, oh yeah, I know God's plan for me. I got it. It's all good. Yeah. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We get that. We read that. We understand that when life is good. But when life is not or when life is tough or when it's silent, this verse becomes tough to live. Because you have to trust. You have to have faith. And that stretches you. But his timing is perfect. And number four, God will never leave your side. Ever. Never. Ever. He is always there. That's not just some cliche statement that a pastor or a leader walks up and puts their arm around you and says, God's going to be with you all the time. That's not just something to say to, to, to try to appease you or to get you to leave. That is reality. It is truth. It is scriptural. In Deuteronomy, it's, it, it's very plain. In, in, in chapter 31 and in verse 6, 
Be strong and courageous. He says, do not be afraid. When this stuff's happening in your life, don't be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. That is a promise to stand on, to build your life on, no matter what. So faith grows in discouragement. The pastor on, what about when God's answer is different than what I prayed for? What about when his answer doesn't match mine or yours? You've prayed and you've believed and you've sought God and and you really think that with everything that's inside of you, you're, you're kind of like this woman. It's not a selfish request. It's not a selfish need. And you get to that place and you believe and, and the answer is different. Now that's a tough place to be, isn't it? Some of you have been there. I've been there. Faith that God knows what's best and his will is so much better than mine. Well, that's tough. Maybe your answer has been different. And maybe it has rocked your world. Maybe it's caused you to question God and question some things. And You know what? We don't always see. You don't always see in the moment what God is doing. Sometimes it takes three or four years to see what God was orchestrating and what God was putting into place. But it takes faith no matter what. It takes the faith to stand up in the face of discouragement. It takes faith to stand up in the face of ridicule. It takes faith to stand up when you feel like you're not wanted or you're not good enough. It takes faith to stand up when maybe somebody looks at you and says, you know what, you don't deserve it. Or when you feel like you don't deserve it. It takes faith to keep going when the answer you've prayed for doesn't show up. Or if it does show up, it's different. It takes faith. And not just saying you have faith, but putting that faith into action. Because faith that's not used is dead and worthless. So today, if you're struggling, if you're discouraged, put your faith to work. Keep coming to Jesus. Don't walk away. Some of you need to find your way to his feet. If God's answer is different and it has rocked your world, trust him. Trust that God's will, no matter what and no matter how much it hurts, is always better 